Hey y'all, today I'm going to talk about first lessons in numbers, oral and written, which I think is a really good example of an early version of a numbers book that has elements of a textbook and elements of a primer. And you can sort of see in a book like this the genesis of what we consider a modern counting book for kids which seems to have appeared in the middle of the 20th century. Uh, now this book is from 1881. So, more books in the series. So we have a preface here. The first lessons in numbers has been prepared in the belief that the objective presentation of numbers is best suited to the comprehension of the child. The teacher who uses this book is expected to make constant use of counters, blocks, or other visible objects that, from the outset, the child may have correct ideas of numbers. The copious illustrations found throughout the book are intended as aids in this direction. The development of numbers and the unfolding of processes are very simple and gradual to correspond to the powers and growth of the child's mind. Addition and subtraction are presented as converse operations and are to be taught together, as are also multiplication and division. Experience has shown that this method secures the best results in the shortest time. From the beginning, oral and slate exercises are combined, the little learner being given something to employ his hands as well as his mind. The large number and variety of written exercises will be appreciated by teachers as relieving them from the necessity of furnishing much blackboard work. The drill exercises with which the book abounds are very valuable as affording the only means for securing perfect familiarity with all the elementary combinations of numbers. These and other features of the work will, we trust, commend it to the intelligent and practical teacher. Y'all, I love that so much. It's so enthusiastic, and it's so modern in some ways. I really like how the manipulatives are used so early that they want to get the kids writing as well as thinking. Oh, that's wonderful. So this plate here, this picture, is the sort of thing that you would see in a modern counting book. That's why I like this so much. It's, here's this pastoral scene. And let's connect real objects in the picture with numbers, right? One house, two ships, three boats, four boys, five girls. Because this is 1881, and you can tell by how they're dressed. Six rails, seven ducks, eight trees, nine birds, ten chicks. All right, so there's the house. There's the ducks, the seven ducks. The two ships in the background there. There's the fence with the six rails. And I, I really enjoy this picture because it's so naturalistic. There's, if you took a look at this picture, you wouldn't say, oh, that's a picture from a counting book. But it is, but it's so well designed. It's not contrived or false seeming at all. All right, here's some lessons. And then, like it said, they're putting addition right into it. Name four things. Hold up four fingers, and the next three boys and one more are how many? Make on the slate four marks. It's all that stuff together. In this wonderful picture of a kid with the blackboard. See, 
the text doesn't really represent, you know, is not represented by this picture at all. This picture is just for flavor. And I wonder if the teachers were encouraged to have the children count the the things in here, you know, one hat. Well, unless those girls are wearing hats, but yeah. Two boys, three girls, I guess one tree in the foreground at least. One thing you'll notice in this book is it's very pastoral. It's very nature and country oriented. Everything's nature. You know, the wind blowing the hat into the water, which I guess could happen in a city, but acorns. Honestly, I'm far from an expert on what a city was like in 1881. Maybe there was a lot of green space. The cat chasing the rats there. But that's that's no city. Most of these pictures, unless I find more city pictures later on, is, um, is just country. Look, one tree here. On the left are two trees. How many in all? It's a natural way to think about addition. I'm fascinated by this device. Some sort of counting device. I'm not quite sure what it is. It's not an abacus, exactly. Maybe I can look up what that's called. And then some recitations. You don't get that in modern schools. Three squirrels are on the ground and three are on the fence. How many are there in all? Right, look at that. It's great. George has caught four trout and one perch. How many fishes has he caught? So the word problem. How many are four and one? One and four. So it's the commutative property. It's helping kids learn that it doesn't matter in what order you add things. It's great. Eggs. So a natural sort of addition problem. On, the, on a plate were four eggs. Two more were put with them. Look at this. The mother or the governess or whoever this is. The cat. I think it's a dog. A little future actor here. In one flock are six birds and in another three. How many in both? On a table are four peaches and on a plate seven more. How many on both the table and the plate? On one branch are seven cherries and on another seven more. How many are there on both? Oh, I like the slit scene. Right. What is it? One, two, five people skating. And goodness, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine people sledding, coasting, it says, one girl and eight boys. So look, this is what it was talking about with inverse operations. It says one girl and eight boys are coasting. How many are coasting? So that's one plus eight equals nine. Then nine children are coasting. One of them is a girl. How many are boys? That's the same thing, but subtraction. What else? A nest? Oh no, a crow robbed it. Oh, look at this. I love it so much. The wagon with the baby in it. Look at those outfits. Some children are at play. Two are boys and three are girls. Looks like the baby in the cart is a boy, I guess, based on the outfits. The children were allowed 15 minutes for play. They have been at play eight minutes. How many more minutes have they? Two rose bushes. There's this thing again. This looks like a real abacus, actually. 
numeral frame. Okay. All right. Have to look up things about the numeral frame in the future. Is this a base 10 numeral frame? Yes, of course it is. So 10, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 by 10. So you could literally count extremely high on this. I mean, the first row goes 1 to 10, and then the second row you could use to count hundreds, thousands, right? Ten thousands, oops. Hundred thousands, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions, tens of billions. You could literally count that high with something like this. Very early educational technology. So here's place value, including Roman numerals, of course. How many birds do you see in the picture? Once one is how many, so it's multiplication. If you should sell eight peaches at one cent each, how many cents would you get? How many horns has a cow with a helpful picture for the people who have never seen a cow? How many ears have three kittens in the picture there so you can count to help yourself if you need? A fox caught three chickens a day for two days. How many did he catch in both days? So look at this. It's connecting the addition operation to the multiplication operation. This book could be used today with some minor changes. I mean, some of you may have been in a classroom where all the kids had individual whiteboard slates. I've certainly done that. So except for the standing up and recite parts, And even that is a thing. This is a remarkably modern book in many ways. Uh-oh, got a rodent problem here. So you've got three times as many on the floor as on the shelf. It's a lamb. A lot of birds. So five plus five plus five is just five times three. Really making the connection. How many fingers are there on six hands? How many feet have five horses? So there's a lot going on in here. Very good stuff. There's a lot more too. How many eggs will six hens lay in a week if they lay four eggs each? Hmm. I wonder if it's out of pictures. This looks more like just drill. Definitions. Yeah, I think we're done with pictures. There's the end of the book. <laughs> it's a library thing. This was scanned by Google, so... I wonder if it has the back cover. Well, yeah, it's not interesting. All right.